Disney has become an icon for children's media by representing the notion of childhood. In such an influential position in the lives of young people, Disney has been hit hard by critiques of gender, racial, and cultural stereotypes in its films and programming. Throughout its earlier films, Disney included racist imagery in its characters that reflected the mindset of that time. As social conducts changed throughout the mid-1900s, Disney realized that these images were no longer acceptable. Since then, it has attempted to erase racist images from its previous work. Although Disney is no longer including explicitly racist footage, children are still provided schemas about race in the form of stereotypes. Common arguments over the use of ethnic minorities in media include ethnic prejudices, underrepresentation, or being casted in negative or insignificant roles. Oh boy, fellas, let's rock the joint! <laughs> Many children do not have the ability to understand the complexity of the world themselves. Instead, their view of the world is mediated through the content they watch. Children are also the heaviest consumers of television. Hence, via the cultivation theory, children assimilate to the repetitive images they are exposed to about status, power, and value across different races. From the 1990s onwards, Disney has been more inclusive of ethnic minorities. This shift is seen in the creation of Disney princesses, starting from Snow White in 1937. This timeline does not only represent the change in Disney, but children's media in general, and the attempt to include more minorities. Although there are attempts to be more inclusive, cultural portrayals of ethnic minorities are not always accurate. Pocahontas was an attempt to include a native princess into the Disney franchise. Although the intention was to highlight issues of colonialization faced by native populations in the past, many viewers were offended by the native cultural stereotypes. Presenting natives speaking to animals and trees in culturally inaccurate clothing are a few examples. At the same time, Pocahontas is a film about ethnic segregation to teach children that it is wrong to judge a book by its cover. Thus, it depicted the racist ideologies of Europeans in the movie to portray this valuable lesson. What can you expect from filthy little heathens? Here's what you get when races are diverse. The skins are hellish red. They're only good when dead. They're vermin, as I said, and worse. They're savages, savages. Barely even human. The movie Pocahontas exposed children to diversity through its central theme of how cultural stereotypes do not accurately depict the truth. However, although its intentions were in the right place, the film fell short as its representation of the native population is inaccurate. Pocahontas is just one example among many inaccurate depictions of different cultures. External factors are heavily involved in underrepresentation and stereotypes. Primarily, cultural based power roles are mirrored, so rather than solely blaming the content, ideological frameworks need more attention as its goal is to maintain certain power structures, which in this case translates to the feeding into the idea of white supremacy. Additionally, it is important to remember that the productions discussed and shown in this video were created for young children. Certain themes may be too harsh or complex to include in children's media. Finally, in terms of ethnic underrepresentation, the setting in terms of geographical location of children's media will influence the ethnicity that is presented. 
Granted, children's media still contains stereotypes, but as production companies have realized their faults, there are also many recent examples of culturally accurate representations, such as Lilo and Stitch that presented an accurate depiction of Hawaiian culture, The Emperor's New School, which has researched the Incan Empire and includes many of its beliefs and monuments. And finally, Zootopia, the latest addition to the Disney franchise that is being praised for its political themes of racism and sexism. Zootopia is using its characters to tell a story about race relations and how quickly even good, fairly rational people or animals can resort to stereotyping when a situation turns scary. That sounds like heady stuff for a talking animal movie, to be sure, but it's handled very well. It actually all becomes surprisingly topical, as the story focuses on how political figures can push alarmist buttons and turn people against each other in the process. Let me stress though that Zootopia is fun and witty throughout and doesn't feel preachy. Even as its strong themes become clear, the kids in the audience when I saw the film were clearly loving it. This is a wonderful example of how Disney, at its best, can blend its past and present together in a very cool, compelling way. Based on the direction children's media content is currently taking, it appears as though we have a lot of progression to look forward to. However, it is also important to have children more aware in what they are viewing, as ethnic stereotypes and underrepresentation, although greatly improving, is still a common notion in children's media. Need to paint with all the colors of the wind.